Huh? It's recording now. Steven. <laughs> okay. Uh, Austin, I record all my lessons. I put them on YouTube. So if you miss a day, you can find them. Or, yes, that booklet. Or uh, if you forget how to do something when you're doing your homework at home, you can go back and watch the video. Okay? I'll tell you what channel my YouTube is later. Okay? Uh, all right. Everybody, we're going to start with what we started the year with. Remember how we use the number line to explain positive and negatives? We need the number line to talk about adding and subtracting. Now, we have to remember, it's math class. So do rules change if the numbers look different? Yeah? No? Yeah? Which is it, Keon? You can't just say yes and no to a yes-no question. Make an answer and stand by it. Do the rules of math change? No. No. Uh, you said no the second time while you were nodding. The rule, do the rules of math change? No. No, they don't. Okay, no, they don't. The rules of math are always the same. That's why, even though math seems confusing, if you learn the rules, it doesn't matter what it looks like because it always follows the same rules, okay? So we'll start with this first one that you guys already know how to do. Negative 2.3. This is our starting point. So where on our number line is negative 2.3? I've already put it on there to help you get started. How do you know that that is negative 2.3 if I hadn't typed that for you? Dale. Dale. There's little checks in between the two and the three. How many of them? There's 10. So we're in decimals because it's divided into tenths. Cool? Yeah. And how do you know that I have had, why have I gone to the left of negative two? If you go to the right, it would be into the one points. Yes? yes. All right. So everyone's cool with my starting point right there. What does this symbol mean in English? Yeah, some more. It actually means and then. So I start at negative 2.3 and then where do I go? No, I go left 1.9 steps. Okay? So I'm starting negative and then I'm going more negative. So my answer is going to be negative. It's going to be 4.2. Now here's the problem. This is why I'm making you guys look at this. How often did you hear in Math 7, Math 8, that two negatives make a positive? Yeah, it's only in multiplication, but too many people forget that part of the rule. And as soon as they see these two negatives, they think the answer has to be positive, especially when there's a plus sign in the middle of it. That's why I go out of my way to explain this. Addition means and then. That's the next step that you do. Everybody cool? Okay, so let's look at this one. Where do I start? Negative one half. I've given you that starting point, right? Now this is weird because what is this split into? Is it split into halves, thirds, what? This is quarters. So negative one half is also negative two fourths. That's what we talked about yesterday. Changing the look of fractions, but keeping the number the same. So why is it split into fourths? Because my and then is fourths. So I got to go down five of them. One, two, three, four, five to get to my final answer. 
Is everybody good with using a picture to explain adding and subtracting? Dale is giving the soundtrack to our day. You're about to meet a boss. Dunham, dunham, dunham. Because I'm about to ask you to show me what you just learned here on a number line. But before I do that, I want to make sure everyone's cool with it. This is what we call, you don't have to write this down, adding pictorially means we're using a picture. All right. So remember, every math addition question, starting point and then the directions that you take to equal your ending point. Everybody cool? So you guys try to do this one. What's your starting point? Where does the arrow go? And where does it end up? Don't use a calculator. Try and do it. Well, then it'll be hard for you to use one. So where do I start for A, which is where, TJ? How many steps? Five. So I'm going to start right here at negative 4.5. And then what? So what direction is positive? So to the right, I go 2.3, yeah? which is 23 little steps, right? Because the steps are a tenth. 0.5. There's our plus 2.3. And what's our final answer? Negative 2.2. Everybody gets it, yeah? Now, obviously, I don't like to interrupt your guys' conversation because it's so rude. Are you finished? Excellent. Obviously, on a math question, you would use your calculator for this, right? But the point of what I'm doing is very often you guys will punch something into your calculator, get an answer, and it'll be totally wrong, but you'll write it down anyway. And I'll say to you, why would you write this down? And you say to me, my calculator said so. Okay? That's why I want to show you guys this. All right? Now, what about this one? Where do I start? Left of zero, how many steps? One in this case, because this is split into thirds, isn't it? And then, where do I go? Seven more steps to the left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And where do I end up? Negative two and two thirds. Cool? Everybody good? All right. Why is C weird? You do have a number line. 
Oh, you don't have a C? Is it on the next page? Son of a B. Okay? Look at my number line. What is my number line chopped into? Eight. So which of these does that work with? This one right away. But it works with fourths too. Why? Eights are double the fourths, right? So this leads us into the next thing that we're going to be doing today. This, we don't want to do this, do we? One eighth, sorry, one fourth equals two eighths, right? So what math did I do here? Multiplied by 2. So what math do I do here? Multiply by 2 here. So what math do I need to do here? Multiply by 2 to get 8. What math do I do here? Multiply by 2. So now I have 3 eighths plus negative 6 eighths. Why are those brackets there? Yeah, it's to show it's a negative, okay? Because it would look weird to write it this way, 7 plus minus 3, right? That's the only reason those brackets are there. So now, now it's super easy. Where do we start? Which is where? 3 eighths to the right of 0. So 3 steps to the right of 0. And then what? So what direction is that? Left six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I end up right there, which is negative three eighths. Is everybody cool? It's already September 14th. Only four more months to go. All right, everyone good, though? Okay, now, can we throw out number lines? Yeah. Okay. Why did I spend so much time on number lines? Pardon? Yeah, because you're never going to use a number line to solve a problem for me, are you? But you are going to use numbers to solve a problem. So you have to be aware of how numbers work, right? All right, let's move it along. Move it on up. Adding fractions without a number line. This is what we just did. You guys didn't have a number line. What was weird about C? The number line that you could see was split into eighths, but the question had fourths, yeah? Different size slices of the pie. That's no good. But once we changed it so they were same slice of the pie, it was super easy to add, right? So let's do that now. I look at this question. The first thing I say to myself is self. It's different slices. And that's no fair to Dale when we order pizza, is it? That was the example I gave yesterday, Austin. I had two slices of the pizza. Dale had two slices of the pizza. So I wanted him to pay for half the pizza because we had the same amount of slices. Except my slices were thirds and Dale's slices were quarters. So I got way more pizza, but I was going to make him pay for half anyway because we had two slices each. And Dale was like, no. And then I was like, fine, I'm taking all my pizza and going home. We didn't have any pizza. But if we had pizza, I'd try to do that to him. I just realized the I thought back to yesterday when the circle was easier. I just said it because I never cut the pizza right. There's always the piece that's bigger than the other. There's always that one long. Not when I cut pizza. When I cut pizza, it's perfect eights. 
Unless I'm cutting a small, and then it's perfect sixths. Sixths. Suffer and suck a tash. Okay, different slices. And I say to myself, self, that's no good. Slices must be the same. And the slices are the denominators. So the denominators need to be the same. All right? So what are we going to use with 2 and 5? Which one is it? So I multiply by 5 or I multiply by 2? Okay, so that's going to be times 2 times 2 to get 4 over 10, yeah? And then here I'm going to times 2 again. I times it by 5. Why? There you go. Five tenths. Everybody cool? Now I can put them together because it's the same size slice of the pie. So what I really have is negative four plus negative five. And what are they over now? Ten. What's negative four plus negative five? Negative 9 over 10. We all remember how to add fractions, right? Don't feel bad. If you ask a kid in grade 12 what's the hardest thing in math, you know what they say? Fractions. For some reason, nobody understands fractions. I don't know why. Because we gave it a fancy word. Fractions. <laughs> Did I tell you guys the joke about the mermaid? No. Okay. No, not enough. Why she was embarrassed at math class? I told yeah. you that. No more jokes. Yeah. Hey, no. zip it. Okay. All right, now, guys, I need to call your attention to a couple of things. One. You may only need to change one, oops, that looks like a W, one denominator. And this first question is an example of that. Why do I only need to change one of them? Yeah, because 6 will work with 12, won't it? So what is the denominator I'm using here? 12. Since this guy's already 12, he doesn't need to change, does he, Harmi? Only the 6 needs to change. I know I need to be over 12. How do I get from 6 to 12? Times 2. Because the only thing I'm allowed to do is multiply, right? If I do anything but multiply, this fraction's not going to be the same. If I multiply the bottom guy, what do I got to do to his partner, the numerator? The same, the same thing. What's 1 times 2? Two? 2. So now I have negative 7 twelfths plus 2 twelfths. So how many twelfths do I have? Nine? Zero, negative seven, what's plus two? Back that way, negative five. Nice job, Dominic. All that in brains, too. Way to shut TJ up. <laughs> so far, it's been impossible to do. The only thing almost as difficult as shutting TJ up is shutting Dale up. You know that, right? All right. 
Will five and three work together? No. So I got to change one or both of them. Both. What's the shortcut to finding what will work? This is the second thing I want to tell you. This is the second thing I want to remind you of. If you can't see a common denominator right away, a common den, remember I'm lazy, a common den right away, you can multiply the two you have. So what are the two denominators I have here? Five and three. I can't think of the common denominator right away, so my shortcut is I'm gonna multiply them. What is five times three? 15. So I'm gonna use 15. So I need 15 there, so what did I do to five? Times three, so what do I do to three? Times three, and what do I get? What do I get? Nine. So I start with nine fittings. What do I do? I needed 15. What did I do? Times five. So what do I do here? Times five to get negative 10. So the 15 stays. What's nine plus negative 10? Negative one. Brilliant. I know, right? I know. Okay. I'll ask Keon again. Hey, Keon. If the numbers look different, do the rules change? <laughs> yeah, there you go, buddy. Does this look different? Does this look different? Yes, it does, but do the rules change? No, they don't, okay? I'm gonna show you guys two ways to do this. Don't write it down yet until you decide which way you like better. Do you understand? Okay. I'm going to show you two ways, way one and way two. No problem. Way one is the way that you guys probably do this question already. I'm going to show you another way that I find easier, and you can decide which one you want, okay? How many of you guys, or what would you guys say, what is your first step with this question? What would you do first? Would anybody like to volunteer that? Dominic. You need a common denominator, right? Eight and three, right? But there's a problem here because we got the mixed numbers out front, right? So how do I get rid of them? Because most of you probably want to get rid of those first, don't you? You all know that circle trick, right? You multiply down here and you add here. What's eight times two? Plus one, 17. So you have negative 17 over eight, right? Plus times plus, what's three times three? Plus one, 10. Now Dominic says we gotta get a common denominator. We absolutely do, don't we? What is that common denominator? I can't see it right away, so what's the shortcut Myers gave me? Multiply them together. What's three times eight? 24. So this guy multiplied by three. So what does this guy multiply by? Three. Now here's the problem. How many of you can do 17 times three in your head? 
it's a little difficult, isn't it? It's negative 51. Plus, what did I do here? Times what? Eight. So what do I do here? That one's easy. Eighty. Then I've got this giant number again, don't I? I got to do negative fifty-one plus eighty. How many of you can do that in your head? It's tough, isn't it? So it's going to be negative twenty-nine over twenty-four. How many twenty-fours fit into twenty-nine? One. Negative one, and how many are going to be left over? Five. Is that basically how you guys would have done this question? Yeah? Okay, I'm going to show you something that I like to do that I find easier. You can choose to do it if you want. Everybody cool? So the way I like to do this question is this. I'm going to write it out again so I have it over here. Here is what I like to do. These are separate things, aren't they? So what I like to do is this. I like to do the big numbers, negative 2 plus 3. What's negative 2 plus 3? 1. And then I like to do the fractions on their own. 1 eighth plus 1 third. Now see how the numbers are way smaller? And it's easier to deal with smaller numbers, isn't it? Our common denominator is still 24. This is still times 3. So this is times 3. So it was... This was negative, remember. Negative. So this is negative 3 plus... This was times 8. So this is times 8. Negative 1... Negative 3 plus 8. That's way easier to do, isn't it? What's negative 3 plus 8? 5. 5 20 fourths. Does everyone see how it's one less, a couple of less steps? Is everyone cool with that? Oh, this was positive. And it's 24ths, not 29ths. See how I got the same answer? And I kept the numbers smaller. Do I care which method you use? Will I ever care what method you do in this class? No. I will often show you more than one way to do a question because some of you will look at this and say, oh my goodness, that's so much easier. And some of you will continue to do the way you've always done it because you're used to it. They're both okay. Everybody picking up what I'm putting down? You can do either one. So let's try it. Can I'm going to leave that up there, let you copy down the one you like or copy down both. I don't really care which one. You did both? Good. It's a good idea, TJ, because the more tools you have in your mathematical toolbox, the better you'll be, right? Everyone cool? I can just, I can wait, Stephen, no rush. I should warn you guys, we're going to have a quiz pretty soon. Probably on Friday. Now, Austin, you just got here for one day. Obviously, I'm not going to, you know, the quiz isn't as big a deal for you. And same with you, River. Right? You guys just got here, so you missed the first two things. So when I give you your quiz, I'll tell you what to do and what you can forget about. Deal? All right, here we go. Now, guys, listen to me, please. These blanks are not necessarily there to all be filled in. Do you understand? This is to help you practice showing work.
Because, let's remember, in grade nine, the math can get a little complicated. And let's say you do a whole bunch of work, but you hit one button on your calculator wrong and get the answer at the end wrong. I want to give you credit for knowing a lot of math, just screwing, hitting a button wrong. So that's why I need to see work. Understand? All right. And then remember, this stuff over here is your thinking. This is to help you practice your thinking. So, looking at these blanks, which method do you think I like better? Method one or method two? Method two, because that's the way I've set this up, isn't it? Do you have to follow my method? No. You can do your own right over here in this blank white space. Everybody cool? I'm going to work through my method. You can work through my method or your own. So I'm going to do big numbers first. Negative 1 plus 3. Negative 5 over 16. And 3 over 8. Dominic, do these work? They do, because 16 works for both, right? So I got to use 16. Am I changing 16? I'm only changing 8. How do I change 8? Multiply by 2. So what do I do to the numerator? Multiply by 2. And what do I get? 6 over what? 16. So now I come back to here. Negative 1 plus 3. Negative 5 over 16. And now I have a new number. 6 over 16. What's negative 1 plus 3? Positive 2. What's negative 5 plus 6? Positive 1, 16. Then I have 2 and then 1, 16. 2 and 1, 16. Can everybody add mixed numerals now? Of course it's a little. We're only practicing a little bit, right? Okay, now, do the next one. Which way are you going to work? Again, you have a choice. Again, you can see which way I prefer. But you can do whichever way you want. What would go here? What would go here? One. What would go here? Three-fifths. What would go here? One quarter. Are those the same? They don't work together, do they? What's the easiest common denominator to use? I can't see it immediately, so what's the shortcut? Times them by each other, right? What's four times five? Twenty. So I need twenties. What did I do here? Times what? 5 times 2 is 20? 4. I hope you guys are starting to see the pattern. What did I do here? Times 5. 5 went up here. 4 went up here. Are you noticing that pattern yet? 5 times up there, 4 times up there. To get 12 and... What's this one going to be? 5. Now we rewrite. 2 plus 1. And it's not 3 fifths anymore. What is it now? 12 twentieths. And it's not 1 quarter anymore. What is it now? 5 twentieths. Then I add. What's 2 plus 1? 3. What's 12 plus 5? 17 twentieths. 3 and 17 twentieths. Everybody cool? And we didn't even use our calculators. Or did we? Nobody cheated and did 5 times 4 on their calculator, did they? I used my mind. All right. Subtraction. Dum, dum, dum. 
Does subtraction exist? No. What is it really? No, it's not denim. Denim is what we make genes out of. It's adding the opposite, right? So this, one-third minus five over six, is really one-third plus negative five over six, isn't it? Can we put those two together? Marcus, can I put six-thirds and sixths together? How? Which one has to change? The three. Absolutely right. So I need this three to change into what, Marcus? I need it to change into six, right? I didn't change the six, so I don't change the five. But what did I do to three? times two, so what do I do to the one? And I get two over six. What's two plus negative five? Negative three over six. Can I stop there? I have the right answer, don't I? Can I make it better? How? Simplify. How? This guy can change to divided by 3 to get negative 1, divided by 3 to get 2, to get my final answer. Everybody good? Great. You guys try these two. I've started one of them for you, and you got to figure out the second one. Go. Go diddly, oh diddly. And then we're almost done. Keon, no, because we're almost done. Hey, hey ah, Cole. Yes. Actually, I lie. You can go to the washroom if you've done A and B. Hmm? Class over at 9.30. Why did I leave 8 here? Why didn't I change 8? Because 2 works with 8, doesn't it, Ethan? Ethan, right? So, I need this 2 to be an 8, which means what did I do to it? Times it by? 2 times 2 is 4. Times by 4. So what do I do to the 1? Times by 4. So now I have negative 4. What's negative 4 and then negative 7 more? Negative 11 eighths. Is that the right answer? Yeah, it's correct. Then why do I have another blank here? Harmeet? Because I can simplify it one more time, can't I? How many 8s fit into 11? 1. So it's negative 1 with how many 8s left over? 3. Look at how smart you guys are. At the beginning of the year, you all said you couldn't do math and you hated math. And yet everybody is doing the thing that grade 12 says is the worst thing in math. Austin, you should have been here. They all lied to me. They all put their hands up and said, we hate math and we can't do it. Every single one of them. So what's this become? 4 over 5, minus a minus. What does it become? 
you add the opposite, so it becomes plus two-thirds. Now we're in business, right? Do five and three work together? No. So what's the common denominator? 15. So this guy had to be 15, so he was times what? Three. Remember, the three goes up there, the five goes up there. So this becomes 12 plus, what's five times two? 10. What's 12 plus 10? 22 over 15. Is that right? Yes. Can we simplify once more? How many 15s fit into 22? One. And how many 15s are left over? Seven. Awesome, possums. Now you want to go to the bathroom? Now that I did the math? You can wait. I'm going to show you how to do this, then you can go. Now, guys, look, please. Look, please. When we added mixed numerals, I showed you two methods, right? The second method, my method, will work here, but it can be confusing. Okay? So when subtracting mixed numbers, I recommend... That's not spelt right. I recommend... Only using improper fractions. Don't use the method I use for adding. Okay? I don't find it works very well. Because it can be confusing. And I'll show you why tomorrow. So what do I got to do here? Three-fourths. What does minus really become? Plus a negative. But I want an improper fraction here, right? So what's, how do I change that? Times plus. What's 8 times 2? 16. Plus 5. 21 over 8. Now, do 8 and 4 work together? Yeah, they do. So 8 isn't going to change, is it, Jamin? So only the 4 has to change, right? So how do I change 4 to make it 8? Add? Times. Times by 2. So what do I do to his partner? 3. Times by 2. So I get 6 over 8 plus negative 21 over 8. 6 minus 21 is negative 15 over 8. Am I done? No, because I can simplify one more time. But I do have the right answer, don't I, Stephen? How many 8s fit into 15? 1, negative 1, and how many 8s are left over? 7. All right, now listen, please. Your homework. Right now, you're going to do A and B right here. You're going to do these two on your own. And you're going to do, in the green book, you are going to do pages, I think it's 104 to 105. But don't write that down until I'm 100% sure. No, I'm the worst kind of liar. Tonight, you're going to do 107 to 108. Just that. These next two bits on here and page 107 and 108. Everybody cool? Keon, go pee. Time to pee. 9-11. What, what difference does it make? What if I said it was 9-08? No, I don't need to pee now. 
Class over in 20 minutes. That's a long time. Yeah, it's a long pee. My dog is so lazy. He won't pee until he absolutely has to, unless you remind him. So last night, I guess nobody made the dog go outside to pee. So I went to put the dog to bed, and I, we're going downstairs to his cage, and I say, Cooper, go pee. And he looks at me. And then I open the back door, and he looks at me. Go pee. And he looks at me, and he sits down. Go pee. He walks out into the yard, and he starts to pee. It was like 27 minutes. He peed, and 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 he peed. It was the weirdest thing ever. And he's got a pet door. He could go and pee anytime he wants, but he's so lazy that he won't do it unless you tell him to. 